Hello and welcome to the one more round of uh, conversation with doctors uh, on the day of uh, World Health Day uh, organized by Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. I am Vinyas and I have with me Dr. Anju Shukla. Uh, she is the Associate Professor in Medical Genetics and she will be talking about preventive health in medical genetics. Welcome ma'am. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Uh, can you talk about your uh, background? And, uh, so uh, I have uh, got training in MBBS and then I trained as a pediatrician. Then I have uh, taken uh, specialty training in the field of medical genetics. So this is a very uh, special course which is available uh, right now only in one center across India that is in uh, Sanjay Gandhi Postgraduate Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got trained there uh, five years back and after that I joined the Kasturba Hospital and I work in the department uh, from then. Okay. So what is this thing called medical genetics? Can you explain that? Yeah. Uh, medical genetics, uh, actually genetics is anything that deals with the genetic material mm. uh, of humans mm. and medical genetics is anything which is relevant to human health and disease. That mm. is uh, what is medical genetics all about. So we work with the, uh, the genetic uh, part of it and uh, we try to find out what are those genetic factors that contribute to good health, what are the mm. genetic factors that can lead to disease in any individual. And mostly we deal with some disorders that tend to run in the families or uh, that can be identified and that can be prevented in certain families. Okay. Uh, what are the genetic disorders? Yeah, genetic uh, disorders are nothing but uh, health conditions due to certain defects or problems in the genetic material. So all of us uh, know that our human body is made up of trillions of cells and within these cells there is genetic material. Mm. So commonly we know that this is a chemical which is nothing but a DNA and this DNA is uh, tightly packed into chromosomes. So mm. all of us have uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes uh, in our body and within these chromosomes we have uh, some small parts which are known as genes. So all of us have around 20,000 genes. So what these genes do is that they produce uh, proteins which are essential for normal body functioning. So once there is any kind of change in this uh, gene that will lead to an abnormal protein and that abnormal protein would not be able to uh, contribute to normal body functioning and somebody would suffer from a genetic disorder. So most of the time the basis of genetic disorder is the abnormal protein that is produced from these abnormal genes or the missing chromosomes or abnormal chromosomes etc. Okay. So when do you think a patient or a person should need a genetic uh, Yeah, this is something very important which I think everybody should be aware of because a lot of time we do not uh, get to see people at the right time mm -hmm. and then they are devoid of our services. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are several ways in which a genetic disorder can present. Most commonly what we see is genetic disorders presenting in children. So in this case uh, they may have a deficit or they might not grow according to their age, uh, mentally, uh, physically or maybe both. So uh, later on sometimes children might, may have a delay in speech, they may show some features which are uh, suggestive of autism uh, in them sometimes they may not perform well in school. So this is all problems related to development. That's a very common uh, area where uh, there can be a genetic disorder for that uh, child or sometimes for an adult as well. Second common scenario that we see is uh, somebody born uh, with uh, some deformity. So we call them birth defects or malformations. So here either externally or internally, uh, whatever normal organs were supposed to be formed, they are not there. So there will be some unusual appearance, something which is missing, something which is extra and that might, uh, uh, the, that <coughs> should uh, catch their attention and they should be uh, consulted with a geneticist. Then few problems happen during pregnancy, like if uh, somebody undergoes a uh, scan, uh, they might come to know that there is some again similar kind of defect that is there in the baby and then they should meet us. Uh, sometimes there can be a uh, lot of pregnancy losses again and again that could have a genetic cause and sometimes people might have or couple might have infertility. A lot of them also are genetic and they should meet a geneticist for that. 
as uh, we are knowing more and more about common diseases also like diabetes which is coming uh, at young age or if you talk about cancer which is a very uh, common disorder but if you see an unusual pattern like if you see there are several members in the family who have similar or they have re uh, related cancer the cancers are coming at early age like 25 years 30 years there are several types of cancer in one person then these cancers can also be genetic and they have a good amount of tendency to uh, run in the family then uh, these uh, people should definitely meet a geneticist a uh, few psychiatric problems again running in the family can be genetic uh, people who are too short uh, for their age have some bony problem or short stature as we call it uh, they can have genetic problems uh, basically anybody who is uh, having any issue related to any organ system and who uh, has these problems right after birth or even if they are not uh, there at birth but they come and they become uh, more and more with time what we call is they are uh, progressing with time they sh should seek a genetic consultation uh, for sure mm. so is it possible for a person to get genetic disorder even when there is no history of that disorder in the family itself yeah this uh, is a very common notion among mm. uh, people and a common misconception as mm. well so whenever we meet a family and we tell them that uh, uh, probably the child or the other family member has a genetic condition, the immediate reaction of the family is that uh, there is nobody in the family who has this, so how can it uh, come uh, in the family. So uh, there are different kind of genetic disorders which have a different cause we can say. So depending on the cause of the genetic disorder, it may be there in the family before or it might, it might just come in that generation. But once that uh, uh, genetic disorder is there, it is better to test and to find out after meeting a geneticist what exactly the problem is so that we know for like for if it's a baby and uh, the parents have come to us uh, then we can find out whether it can happen again in the family if it's an adult who has a genetic problem we will come to know whether the children who are already there or if they plan for more children will it go to the next generation so it will all depend on the uh, disorder but definitely even if it's not there a dis disorder can happen for the first time in a family Okay. So, what are the tests available to uh, you know for the children, especially mm -hmm. uh, as, uh, uh, as far as these genetic disorders are concerned? And when do they have to do, undergo those tests? So, there are several ways to prevent genetic disorders, but here I would say that not all of them can be prevented. Mm -hmm. What we can prevent uh, is some common disorders which mm -hmm. can be screened and for which screening tests are available. So I can give you a few examples yes, like yes. Uh, for example uh, Down syndrome is a very common uh, condition. So around 1 in 800 pregnancies would uh, have mm -hmm. Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what uh, we can do is uh, we can scan uh, or we can do ultrasound for the baby who is there in the womb at mm -hmm. around 3 months of pregnancy and see for a few markers which are there mm -hmm. and also do some blood test from the mother. So uh, based on the blood test which is uh, called a double marker test and based on the ultrasound findings uh, mm -hmm. that we have. Uh, there may be a risk that we may get from these screening tests because these are screening tests we might just come to know whether there is any risk mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. So if there is a risk there are other confirmatory tests which are available which we can do and we can find out if the baby has the problem uh, or not. Uh, till then mm, we do not know because mm -hmm. it's a screening test. So often these screening tests are misinterpreted as confirmatory tests. Mm -hmm. So this should, uh, when a double marker test is positive, it just means there is little risk of having a uh, problem but that doesn't mean that the problem is there and they need to undergo further testing. Few more sophisticated techniques have actually uh, come up like a non-invasive prenatal mm -hmm. screening test which also screens for common chromosome problems like uh, Down syndrome and uh, here the accuracy and the sensitivity of the test is very high so as opposed to the double marker test where a lot of uh, women who will undergo this test will uh, have the test as positive and then they'll have to undergo confirmatory testing uh, by invasive mm -hmm. testing if uh, somebody undergoes NIPS then uh, if it says that uh, there is no abnormality, usually 99% of the time that problem is not there. So it's quite accurate. But that mm. at uh, this moment, the limitation is that these tests are a little expensive. Okay. 
uh, after the birth also uh, there are tests to see if uh, they have the genetic disorder can you talk about that yeah so uh, it is uh, like again same thing that we cannot know all the genetic disorders and we should not know who uh, mm-hmm. can have uh, some genetic disorders later as mm-hmm. well so uh, few of the countries uh, the developed mm-hmm. uh, countries have uh, certain newborn screening programs which are mandatory uh, mm-hmm. for all the children that are born which will be done at birth mm-hmm. and uh, they would uh, come to know if somebody is uh, going to develop a particular disorder uh, in indian uh, setting it is still not something which uh, is mandatory mm-hmm. but it can be done on voluntary basis but it, uh, we should know what we are testing for because mm-hmm. uh, uh sometimes lot of these uh, disorders are not treatable mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. what we try to do is we try to screen for uh, those uh, disorders where some management or treatment is mm-hmm. available for example we would like to do a hearing screen for the baby because if we do a hearing screen we can put uh, some implants mm-hmm. or hearing aids and the baby's language development everything would be fine because uh, hearing impairment uh, will not be there uh some problems like uh, some babies are born with hypothyroidism that means there is thi- thyroid hormone is deficient uh, mm-hmm. in those babies so if they are born with that they will have lot of development problems if it is not managed so if you screen whether the baby has hypothyroidism or not because at that time there won't be any manifestations you can just put on a simple medicine like uh, thyroid replacement and then baby will uh, grow well and would not have any issues at all okay so uh if there is a child born in the family and uh, they know the parents know that there is some genetic disorder uh, is there a way in which they can know that even the second child will also have the uh, yeah. genetic disorder it's so it's how yeah so as i said the cause of all genetic disorders is different sometimes the risk would be very small that they can have mm. but for everything we should know what the previous baby has so mm. fortunately in the last uh, five years we have mostly all kind of genetic tests that is available mm-hmm. anywhere in the world is available in india as well mm-hmm. and especially in the uh, department of medical genetics in kasturba mm-hmm. medical college we have all type of genetic tests that can be done for babies to find out uh, the kind of genetic problem they have is available so mm-hmm. once we know what problem is there uh, in the baby then we would be able to tell what are the chances that it can happen mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. if in case uh, there is chance that it can happen again what we do is we uh, test during mother's pregnancy that test can be done uh, around uh, 11 to 12 weeks by a procedure called as chorionic villus sampling and uh, at 16 weeks uh, by a procedure called as amniocentesis in both these procedures we just take some amount of sample from the baby and we test specifically for the same disorder which is there in the previous baby and then with 99% accuracy we will be able to tell whether the next baby is going to uh, have mm-hmm. this problem or not we, these tests have been devised because uh, till date uh, most of the genetic uh, problems are very severe and most of them do not have a definite treatment so this is a kind of prevention that is available and then uh, the recurrence of same disorder in the family can be prevented okay so what are the kind of awareness uh, the general public should have about the genetic uh, disorder yeah so as i had talked before people uh, should know when they should uh, uh-huh. come to us that is the most important thing to know uh-huh. so whenever they have a doubt that this could be genetic please uh-huh. uh, come and visit a genetics then also now what we are seeing is lot of people who are not trained in genetics are doing lot of genetic testing which is becoming uh, freely available so uh, people uh, or physicians who do not understand a genetic test may not be able to interpret it so whenever uh, somebody has a genetic disorder it's better to meet a genetic test get the genetic counseling done understand uh, what is there and then go for a genetic testing and uh, confirm what is there okay. so finally could you talk about uh, the department uh, in kmc uh, how we do function yeah. so we have uh, four uh, doctors in uh, kasturba medical college uh, and uh, we are all uh, trained uh, in the super specialty of medical genetics and we practice different uh, sub specialties in the department so i uh, look after neurogenetics uh, that means i specially uh, run my clinic for children who have developmental 
disorders uh, who are not growing uh, well mentally who have lots of seizures or if they are well before and they are worsening with time uh, children with <coughs> autism this is what i look into and then uh, our colleagues look into different uh, subspecialties like um, uh, disorders of bone or skeletal dysplasia then we have a perinatal clinic which looks for problems related to uh, pregnancy and what all tests uh, should be done in pregnancy and then another clinic is there for metabolic disorders uh, in the department okay so with this we can conclude i guess so thank you so much for your time uh, we was this was the conversation with uh, dr anju shukla about uh, medical genetics uh, please uh, tune in because uh, we have one more round of uh, conversation coming up Thank you so much and uh, stay tuned.